Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 beta 6. iOS 18.1 beta 6 is available to developers and iOS 18.1 public beta 3 will either be out by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. Now this particular update came in at 922.7 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, was about 600 megabytes on the one it's installing now with the iPhone 11, and this was released alongside many other Apple updates as well today iPadOS 18.1 beta 6, watchOS 11.1 beta 4, macOS 15.1, Sequoia beta 6, and many others. You can see the list here, but lots of different updates. If you're in the developer program or you're a public beta tester, expect those soon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22B5069A. We're probably getting very close to a final release. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. And one thing they've fixed in this section is it actually says all iPhone 16 models are supported with Apple intelligence before it only listed the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max. As far as new features, well, they have added an, a modem update this time around. So we do have a modem update going from 1.11.00 to 1.11.01 .01 on the 16 Pro Max. So I wasn't having any connectivity issues, but hopefully it improves it a little bit if you were. Now the new features this time around, while well, we had the hello screen the first time this rebooted, we see that from time to time, but as far as new features and changes in the control center, you may already notice a couple here. We have a new airdrop control. So if we go to add a control, scroll down to connectivity, not only do we have airdrop, but we also have satellite. So they've added those options. We no longer have to have them separated within this little control center option. Also, if we scroll down a little bit further, we have new measure options. So we have a little ruler here and a level. So if you want to add those, you can go right into your measure options and it will open right up, go right into your options here. Now there's new features here for the phone as well. Now this is something I don't personally use, but if you're using dual SIM cards, there's actually an update here. And thanks to Thomas for sending this in, but you'll see now instead of it saying primary line, you have a little P here in the upper left and it's blue. You can tap on this and then switch between personal line and secondary line. So they've redesigned the overall interface a little bit to look a little cleaner. And that's there if you have dual SIM cards. Another thing they've updated is I took a screenshot of this is if you have multiple notifications from single people or apps, it actually has a two next to it. Even if you're not using summary this time around, it's part of Apple intelligence. And you'll see here where it says a little summary there as well. So that's something that's been updated in iOS. OS 18.1 beta six. Also, if we go into settings and then we go back and we go to search within search settings, there's a new little information window that pops up telling us that we can search for step-by-step -step information. So again, I took a screen capture of this and you'll see it says, ask Siri, how get step-by-step -step instructions from Siri, press and hold the button, then ask your question. Now, Apple actually initially showed that when you go to search within your search settings, you'll get these how to instructions. And they showed this with iOS 18. We have yet to see it yet, but maybe they'll bring it maybe how to Bluetooth and we'll see what it brings up. Nothing here yet. And of course I misspelled it, but this gives you an idea of maybe we'll have step-by-step -step instructions. Of course we could use Siri to do the same thing. Now, if we go into health and maybe you've been wanting to use the sleep apnea option, that's actually available now. So this sleep information isn't correct, but we have sleep apnea notifications. We can set it up here and then set that up on your watch. If you have a watch that supports it. So just go through tap next. Are you 18 or older? Yes. Have you ever been diagnosed? Me personally? No. We'll tap continue. And then it actually says Apple watch tracks your breathing. And if you've seen this, this was added with watch series 10 or watch OS 11. And now it's turned on. So we've got that enabled. And now when I'm sleeping, it can sense that and let me know if maybe I need to go see a doctor about sleep apnea. If we go into notes, they've updated this as well. Last time around, we got a new icon and within notes, we had a new icon here with the Apple intelligence symbol. Now they've added a little pen to it. So maybe you say this is a new notes and we'll misspell that purposely. We'll tap the button, then we'll proofread and it will give us information and change it to new note so that it's correct. So this is something that's part of Apple intelligence and we just have a new button to do it instead of highlighting and selecting which you can still do. So if you press and hold, let's try that again, select all, then we can go to writing tools, which is the same thing. It's just easier to hit that button and go right into it. So that's something they've updated this time around. 
Also, if we go into the wallet app, so let's go into wallet and within the savings section, we now have the Goldman Sachs label here with FDIC. So that's something they've added very small, but something that's new in this update. Also something new is if we go into the camera control, press and hold, keep holding. We'll just give it a moment here. You'll see a little line that just appeared. The line appeared. You can pull down, go into your different modes. Of course, it's showing as though I'm holding it in portrait, but this gives you an idea. You could do that before, but now the little line shows if you just keep pressing and holding, it will show up below it. It just takes a few seconds as you continue to hold on it. So that's something a little bit new but I'm not sure why it's there. Also something new has to do with many different splash screens this time around. If we go into photos here and let's cancel, we have quite a few here. First time you go into mail, you'll actually get one. However, we don't have the redesigned mail app just yet. So you'll see that here where it talks about priority messages, message summaries, and smart replies. There's also one for the app store where you can search a little bit better using natural language. We also had one for free form. At least I saw one. We had one when I went into TV saying, watch the battle for the MLS cup for free. And then also the ask Siri. And then also if you're using AirPods, the loud sound reduction option popped up. However, that was in beta five. You could turn it on and off, but this is now just a new splash screen that shows up if you're using it. So a lot of different changes and features as they begin to refine this. One other thing I wanted to mention is if you're using iOS 18, you can now use a wired game controller. This was available in iOS 18 apparently, and no one seemed to know about it. Apple didn't mention it and it was found by Steve Moser and Mac rumors. So you'll see posted that story today where if you're on iOS 18, it actually works. So if you're using it with iOS, iPad OS or Mac OS 15 Sequoia, you can now use your controllers wired. It seems. Now, as far as other issues with this particular update, well, Apple has not yet updated their public facing release notes. So if we go back in refresh here, they're not in the feedback app yet. They're still showing beta five. However, we still have a few different issues. One of those is if we go into messages now within the keyboard, if we go to our emoji keyboard, you'll see, we actually have missing emoji. This was something in beta five or public beta two, and it continues in this beta. So it's still an issue. It seems, however, it does seem that it fixed the touch issues with iOS on iPhone 16. So many of us had touch issues. Apple fixed it with iOS 18.0.1. It seems to be resolved in this beta as well. Also, they seem to have fixed an issue with the hearing control center icon that would show up. So if you went in here and you have the little hearing icon with multiple pages, sometimes it would create a page and just show up. That seems to be fixed now with this hearing icon. I typically have it here anyway, but it looks like they've fixed that bug. Now, as far as the next releases, well, we could see an iOS 18.0.2 as it's only October 7th and we have a ways to go until iOS 18.1 is released to the public. So we don't have any evidence that it's in testing, but it seems likely as we actually had three releases by this point last year with iOS 17. So maybe they'll continue to fix bugs or update security issues. As far as the next version of iOS 18.1, well, at this point we could see an RC version. However, we could also see another beta. We could see beta seven or an RC. It just depends on how well this one actually works with Apple intelligence. So we'll have to wait and see. But according to Mark Gurman, Apple is actually targeting October 28th for a public release of iOS 18.1. Now it could be earlier than that on the 21st, or it could be later on the 28th. We'll have to wait and see if they release another beta or if they jump right to the release candidate or RC version. Now, as far as overall performance, well, many people are saying that with this version so far, it feels very smooth, especially on the iPhone 16 models. You'll see, I have it just recently updated, at least during this video on the iPhone 11. So it stuttered there a little bit. That's the first time I went into the app library, but on the iPhone 11, let's go into music here seems to be okay with scrolling in general. It seems to be fairly fast and I'll show you that with benchmarks in just a moment. As far as the overall heat, well, the phone is a little bit warm right now. It is processing in the background. So I expect that, but nothing that's super hot to hold on to, but a little warmer than normal. So I would expect it to continue to process, but we'll check that on the weekend with the regular follow-up. And if we take a look at the battery, give it just a moment to load battery health is still at 100%. I have 15 cycles on my 16 pro max. And over the last 10 days, well, yesterday I didn't use it a whole lot. I kind of took the day off, had one hour and 50 minutes of screen active time but only used about 30% of my battery the entire day. So that is actually a pretty good sign today. I've used it more two hours and 30 minutes and we're down to 73%. So it's easily getting me through the day now. 
So it's doing much better than it was before. So that's great to see. And so far it's been much better. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.1 beta six or public beta three, well, if you haven't installed any yet on your main device, I would probably hold off until the next version is available. Once we get to the release candidate, you could try it out. But if you're still up in the air about it, I'd probably wait and see how this one goes. However, if you haven't already installed iOS 18.0.1, I would definitely do that. After a few days, it seems to fix the battery for most people and just be much more stable. As far as benchmarks, let's take a look at that. I ran these right after installing it. So we'll go to the history and it's pretty good. 3,450 for single core, 8,394 for multi-core. Now, considering it's still processing, these are two that I ran the other day and you'll see it's a little bit better than the last run and a little bit worse than the one before that. So it's still within its margin of error. It's running pretty well and definitely nice and fast. So that's everything so far with iOS 18.1 beta six or public beta three. Now, if you found any additional features or changes that I haven't mentioned in this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if I find any, of course, I'll mention them this weekend with the regular follow-up video. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it for free as I normally do in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.